please, 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 please. Um, yeah, come out with that. Come out with that. Come out. <laughs> Coming out with it. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, they got rid of the chocolate chip. Oh no, remember when they did the whole grains? Bro, you don't get a you don't get a whole you grain don't get muffin. A whole if grain you want muffin. a muffin, you don't want chocolate a- chocolate chip. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate chip. Chocolate chip chocolate muffin. Chill. Come on. Welcome back to the Sandbar, and on today's episode, we're gonna get into one of my friends' endeavors here. They're uh, they're visiting from Florida, and uh-huh. with us today we have actor, songwriter, artist, producer, another one, intruder, another one, a true, another a trush, one, the, <laughs> a, a, protrusion, the beautiful activist, and just an overall amazing dude. My boy, Will Johnson. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it is a blessing to be on your podcast today. And I just want to say how thankful and appreciative I am for this opportunity, this beautiful moment. Dang, man. You're going to make me cry. We just started, bro. Relax, bro. Relax. Just, just a couple of tears. Not, <laughs> not, we're not soiling the royal <laughs> oats yet. <laughs> but yeah, Will. Um, so, you know, how you been, bro? Take me through what's what's been man. going on in your life lately. Man, uh, so honestly, always busy, always working on what I love. Um, but currently, I'm doing a lot of what I love right now. Literally quit my job, and I know we talked about this earlier. Yeah, yeah. I quit my job so that way I can focus on more what I love, what I'm passionate about, and that raw focus. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's a blessing for me to still be able to make money doing what I love through all of this, especially in the pandemic we're living in. And after the year we just had, um, but yeah, man, I'm doing a lot of what I love. So I that's think that's so. the most important part. I think that's that's necessary right now. A lot of people realize that some of the things that we were worried about before really aren't that significant. And we, we're starting to really, like, I think the workspace, the work, just regular nine to five jobs are taking the environment a little more seriously, taking mm-hmm. mental health a little more seriously. And people are more you know, involved with the people around them. You know, you appreciate your friends and your family way more now, either because you had to spend a lot of time with them or you didn't get to spend any time with them, right? You know, on either side of that. And it's crazy that it took a pandemic for that to happen. <laughs> I mean, think about it, bro. Like, when you watch a movie, when do people change? <laughs> when it, like, yeah, when the zombie yeah, apocalypse yeah, and stuff exactly. comes. That's when people so, start reacting. Hey, man, movies. What's happening in movies yeah. is crazy. Yeah, it comes from somewhere. Right. So um let's see you moved down to florida correct for a purpose though like you didn't just go down there because you wanted to be in florida of course not you know would you what was the situation going what was the thought process what, so what got you um there? so unfortunately there has been things in my life that has set me back that have broken down the foundation that i've always tried to build for myself mm-hmm. um like when i graduated high school i moved out to florida because uh, i mean i after high school, I moved out to New York so mm-hmm. that way I can focus on my acting a lot more and try to be in tune with what I love. Yeah. Um, but of course, things have happened and it broke down the foundation again and I had to come back to PA. So I was thinking, I was like, you know what? I need to take some time to really build up on myself and figure out where I want to go and where I want to be. So I took a vacation down to Florida. Beautiful vacation. And um, I was like, you know what? This is great. I'm surrounded by a lot of art and a lot of people who are like-minded and driven and focused because there's many places in the world where, you know, you can get stuff done, Mm -hmm. like New York, like California, land of opportunities. Uh, So Florida has just been one of those things that have blessed me with the ability to do what I want to do. Yeah. Okay. So what are you doing in Florida now? So currently I am filming, so doing a lot of my acting. I am doing a lot of spoken word events, going out to uh, different venues. Mm-hmm. I've been invited as a guest speaker. Ooh. Uh, come on, a little, a little <laughs> dabbling something. So um, just stealing a show, yeah. um, holding space on the stage. And, you know, we, we ain't strangers to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I dabbled. But I was you got I, your feet wet. Yeah, I got my feet wet, but I definitely didn't get into it as deep as I probably would have liked. But I was I was all over the place during that time. So you that's know true, that's true. Yeah, I didn't uh I didn't prioritize the things that require prioritization. 
<laughs> right, right, yeah. right, right. But um, so I saw you. Uh, so you're doing your acting, films, making not just because we got to clarify this, right? Because you're not only you're shooting commercials, of but course. you're also working on your own content as far as film and entertainment, that kind of thing that you put out mm-hmm. yourself, whether it's a part of your spoken word or if it's just something that you're doing, you know, for whatever purpose, entertainment or for for um, if you want to do like a more serious thing. And you also, you know, do motivational speaking. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, man, I'm going to just let you know right now, you inspire me every day. Right. Hey, I appreciate that. And y'all, you have to get to know Will. I'm going a, I'm to a make sure to plug him at the end of this video. But, you know, Will's uh, the way I see it, Will is we, we've talk, talked about uh, talked about this before. Um, Will is kind of like me in a different environment, you know, and that's I'm very kinda true. Like, and that's I, very true. And vice versa. I'm like him. If he were in a different environment, you know, we we kind of have that weird. uh connection <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's like i feel like we're soulmates in a way you know see it's, and a lot of people they think soulmates only um reflect around like romantic yeah stuff. yeah yeah like no mm-hmm. like there are people that come into your life or mm-hmm. that you cross paths with and you become soulmates it's the vibe it's what people call uh, it. you know it's the people are like oh right. they I've, i can vibe with them like there that's a connection you know that's just that's in how would you say this? It's like a extra physical connection. There's mm-hmm. probably an actual metaphysical or something like that, but there's actually a word a- extraterrestrial. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, you just kind of connect with people in a certain way, and I I've been able to kind of through through the podcast too. I've been able to to kind of figure out where that comes from or how how to tap into that sort of. But yeah, so aside from the the acting, you know, you've been getting into a lot of the spoken word, like you, yes, you know, YouTube. Instagram, wherever, you know, wherever, wherever you get your social media, Will's on there. So for your spoken word, um, I guess I just kind of want to know where does that come from? You know, I, I know your story, but where to you, you know, I, I don't know the mind. I, I can't tell what you're thinking. Understood. Understood. So um, this is a perfect time right now for me to be uh, speaking actually right now. Um, so I want to make two key points. Uh, one about 2020. Um, and one about just as an artist. So especially for my spoken word, I was reading this book one time and it was called, um, I wrote this for you and only you by Ian Thomas. So go cop his book and check that out, please, because he's a wonderful artist, um, and writer and blah, blah, blah. Um, and it said in the book, you as an artist have the greatest or hardest job of all time. Mm-hmm. You are charged with making people feel in a world that tells them not to. Mm. So every time um, I ask somebody or um, throughout my work and people leave comments and stuff, I reach out to them and I say, what about my video made you feel this way? Or how did it get to this point where you are crying or you're excited about the work that I post, Mm. the content that I produce? And they say, you just make me feel. So that fills me with peace and gratitude. That fills me with feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's crazy. It's like how how did we get to this point in time where me as an artist and I'm able to fulfill my duties and I'm able to complete mm-hmm. my job. Yeah. And uh, 2020, 2020 was the year of perfect vision. Mm. Whether we like it or not, it was a beautiful year. Oh yeah. For many things. Yeah. For many reasons. Yeah. We don't want to discount. Obviously, the tragedies, the losses, but at the same time, I think through those tragedies and losses, we found the beauty of what a vision, like you're saying, you know. So, like, it is, it definitely was like after the year ended, though, and coming into 2021, it was like a breath of fresh air Mm -hmm. because it was like, wow, we get to start over. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, there's a lot of people was like, wow, we get to start over. (laughs) <laughs> we get to do this again it's yeah, not yeah. fair yeah so um yeah definitely with my spoken word um words carry weight mm-hmm. and for me to be able to put them in such a way where you can feel what i'm saying to you is different yeah it's not an easy thing to do at all and um from my of course you know my story but from my like past and from my traumatic experiences and from the things that i've had to live through Putting those in words, it's not easy mm-hmm. at all. 
But for me to do that, and I don't do it for myself, it's it makes it bigger than who I am. Yeah, and I'm grateful for that. Yeah, it's uh, I, I definitely get where you're coming from as far as you know when you feel something. I, this happens to me all the time. When you feel something, it, you when you feel something strongly, it's so much harder to put it into words, whether it's a a good or bad feeling. Or if it's just because uh, sometimes you'll you'll feel you'll feel so strongly about something, but you don't even know if you're upset or happy about it. And when it, when it gets to that, you don't really know how to describe it because there's mm-hmm. words are powerful, but sometimes just expressing yourself is worth more than anything you could have said. Or people treating you in a certain way. Is- oh, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Slow it down. Say that one more time. That was <laughs> that was fire. <laughs> no, it's, it. There are times when expressing yourself is more powerful than any words you could have said write that down <laughs> <laughs> write that down right now and you, you obviously through words it's a lot easier to communicate that mm-hmm. to people directly and sometimes you don't even have to like our you know when you have somebody in your life that really kind of knows you or somebody that has that kind of vibe that that soulmate connection they can pick up on cues they, they know who you are they can pick up on on the way you're feeling without you having to say words or um if you have some some people they're they've had whoever raised them your your mom your dad uncles aunts guardians step parents whatever they spend so much time watching you grow that when you don't even have to be doing anything and they'll just feel something you right know? but um and then we have we have i have friends like that you know i have okay i have like one or two <laughs> but you know i have people that'll just be like hey you know what's go what's what's up? You know, yeah. Either it's it's they can whatever just tell. reason. Yeah, it's just whatever reason. Either I looked a little weird on a post, or maybe I haven't hit them up, or I haven't done something in a while, and they'll just, hey, yo, you good? Like, what's what's going on? And I appreciate that so much because I know a lot of people don't have that, and it's not necessarily their fault. Because a lot right. of people, um, they'll say that you isolate yourself, or you know, you're not really a people person. But the thing is, we sometimes you don't have that environment, exactly. or you don't have those people to exactly. connect with. And it's crazy that you say that um, because I wrote this piece uh, and it was very subtle. And it basically said, it's not that people don't want to talk about it. It's that they don't know how to. Yeah. So for you to put them in a position to be like, speak, say yeah. something about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> like, I don't know yeah, what to say. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what to feel because we feel so much. And people tell us, what are you feeling? Feel this, feel that. Yeah. Feel this. And it's like. Is is much more long gone are the days of sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's that generation is not that gen honestly, I believe that that generation is the generation right before the anti bullying. Right. I think were we talking about this in the car about bullying? No, oh, no, 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 no. I was no, having no. this conversation with somebody else, but we were talking about how um I don't I'm not advocating for bullying, <laughs> but um when you protect our younger generations from so many real life things Mm -hmm. because you can do anti-bullying in school all you want but when they get to college they're gonna get bullied you know when they when they get out in the real world they're gonna get bullied so he basically saying don't go to college (laughs) (laughs) don't go don't go to the real but any any anywhere you go bullying but now it's not that we um it's not that we're battling bullying bullying has adapted you Mm -hmm. know i'm not even talking about cyber bullying it's all those people that are out on social media and saying whatever they want, that's cyberbullying or whatever. But some people in real life, now they just feel like they can voice whatever they want to say. Exactly. And that, like, for you to say that, you can literally say the same thing about, like, racism. Yeah. yeah like, it's bullying. <laughs> that's the type of bullying. It's crazy. Yeah. Ah, that's powerful. As, <laughs> as a powerful perspective to look at. Um, and, you know, it's not like you need your kids to eat dirt. Like, a little bit of dirt is going to strengthen their immune system. Now, you don't exactly. want them, you don't want them to eat a whole mound you know eat a no. whole and and but, sometimes you know as kids we we drunk from the water hose yes, that rest, yes, that rest the hose, water. yes yes but now kids now if, yeah. if somebody don't drink from that no your immune system bye bye gone your red blood cells yeah. about to be- i don't know i don't know if you ever did this but we had like little onion grass some people's yards had like onion, oh, you know the grass just yeah. chewing on it yeah and you just, just a little bit of chewing just yeah. like while we're like playing flag football or something and like like <laughs> sometimes like acorns oh yes you ever bite them <laughs> No, nah, bro. Somebody uh, told me spiders live in acorns, so I got scared. So I picked up an acorn one time. It was a spider in it. So technically, they weren't wrong. 
but it's not. Yeah. But it's not fast. Oh my, that just, bro, that when I get so upset when people take a thing and just run it as facts. Like mm-hmm. there's somebody, there's somebody in my life. I'm not gonna put, it, I'm not gonna throw them under the bus right now. But they love to take a thing that is factual in the moment. Like it, it's a fact in that instance, right? So they'll be like, um, you'll see, you'll see a pit bull, with, a spotted pit bull, just a pit bull with some spots on it, right? And they'll come up to me and be like, "Yo, all pit bulls got spots." <laughs> like I'm telling <laughs> you right now, facts. I just saw a pit bull, and all of them are spotted, and like, like they're they're an expert all of a sudden because they experience this one thing. They'll and it's kind of like they're a little dramatic that they don't they're not always being serious but when you when you don't kind of identify that within yourself okay. you you let it leak out into real life situations so now if somebody comes to you with advice and you think you know everything about them you'll be like oh no do this and that this is a bad person because i've handled this before mm-hmm. i've seen a person like this before when they don't know the other person's circumstance see that's exactly where you have to be careful with yes. giving advice mm-hmm. Because once you start giving advice, because I don't give advice, um, I give encouragement. Mm-hmm. Once you start giving advice, it's basically saying, you need to do this because this is what I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's yeah, like, exactly. what you did is not going to work for this person mm-hmm. because one, they're feeling things different, even though it's the same emotions, yeah. like, because we, cy- we recycle the same emotions yeah. because we're humans, we're all connected, but we feel things differently. Mm. So it's like, I'm going to do this this way. You do this this way. We're going to meet up there's somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. There's going to be some sort of. But it's not the same outcome mm-hmm. because you're you may be a different person than when you were before I met you. Yeah, and I'm I could be elevated or I could be just feeling depressed and down in the dirt, mm-hmm. all from the same situation. And also, you might meet at the outcome. Like your journeys might have been different, but the result was the same. Mm-hmm. And so I've taken that into consideration now that when people come to me for advice i I, i've stepped away from telling them what to do and telling them how to feel but now i'm like okay this is what i would do this is you know this is how i would have handled it and then knowing the person if i know them a little better i can be like well you know a lot of times you look for this kind of thing and maybe just think about something else like you 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 want to that's great that's great you kind of want to help lead them towards what because they're coming to you for a reason you know but you want to help them kind of just articulate because sometimes just talking to somebody they'll t- while they're explaining things to you while they're responding to what you're saying they'll figure it out themselves right you know we're we're problem solvers naturally so they'll they just need a way they need an outlet they need a vessel to help get that out of them right but um you know when you're telling just someone to do something because you think this is what they should do not only some people aren't responsive but other people might do it and it doesn't work and now they might not, even if they don't feel any negative feelings towards you, they might feel worse about themselves. Because right. they're like, oh, well, this person told me to go do this and it didn't work. So I must suck. Right. Or I must be doing it wrong. Or, yeah. Like that's yeah. definitely like, especially in like when you're trying to get to a certain point or mm-hmm. you're trying to get somewhere. Yeah. If you don't reach success, you suck. Yes. Yes. And it's like, you got to ask people. What is success to you? Yeah. What is happiness to you? Yeah. What is peace to you? What are you comparing it to? Exactly. And it's, oh my gosh, it's so crazy because literally I was reading this book. I'm always reading books. <laughs> <laughs> and it said, um, comparison is the thief of joy. Mm. And when you Ooh, start- com- I, I, I think I know. I heard that the other you day. You've seen that. I, I seen that. Oh, I, you see. What's the word for sound? For hearing? Heard. <laughs> <laughs> I verbally saw it. Understood. So you imagined it when you heard it. Yeah. Continue. Um, <laughs> but yeah, when when you say comparison is the thief of joy, whatever, like you can compare yourself to people. You can compare yourself to the things that you will never have. You can compare yourself to your loved ones, but they aren't you. You yeah. can compare yourself to a life that is similar to yours, but as, that is not your life. Because yeah. there are people that's doing what I do. There are people that's doing what you do, but it's not the same. Yeah. Because it's not you in that environment. It's not yeah. you feeling those things. Mm-hmm. And um, that that sentence, that phrase, it, it holds truth. So much truth. Because like you said, you know, that's not you. And the, the other thing is, it's not only because I guess for, for people that to take both sides of that, it's not only that you're not that person, but they're not you either. So they don't bring the value that you bring. It's not just mm-hmm. that you can't. It's not just that you don't do what they do. It's that they can't do what you do. Mm. That's the other thing. So it's not, 
maybe like I'm doing this podcast, right? Maybe I'm not going to be probably not going to be the greatest podcaster of all time, but that's not my goal. You know, like I'm doing this to create a community based discussion to celebrate everyday people, you know, beautiful. But somebody else who's doing a podcast, they might be doing like a sports cat. They might be doing like a sports podcast where they want to discuss what happened to LeBron James last night. They want to discuss who won the World Series or whatever. And they kind of want their podcast to become maybe an official sports show. You know, they want their purpose is to become a show that discusses sports in a podcast on a podcast platform. So the 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 difference, the point that I'm trying to make is that you have to understand where you're trying to go, mm-hmm. you know, because if you want to be an actor, you don't look at Dwayne Johnson. You're like, I want to be Dwayne Johnson. No, you look at Dwayne Johnson. You're like, oh, I would kind of like, wh- how did he get there? You know, like his journey is kind of like this. OK, well, I can do this, but. I can also do this. You know, if he talked to um, this studio, I can't talk to that studio, but maybe I can apply what he did with them and do it here in my own way. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to find a way where, yes, obviously you look up to people, you have role models, but you have to filter, use yourself as a filter yes, and sir, apply yes, sir. it and do it in that way. Because otherwise you're just, you're never going to. And it's it's amazing that you just said that word, um, well, it's two words, role model. Mm-hmm. Um it's crazy because when I was growing up, especially like in high school and stuff, I don't want to say that I didn't have role models, but I didn't really have role models. Mm-hmm. But now I'm at a point in my life where I am a role model to some people. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, we missed a step. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we missed a step. How did we get yeah. to this point? Yeah. Um, because it's like, how do people look to me when I didn't have anyone to look to? Yeah. It's like how... And it's frustrating because that's the separation, yeah. especially, like I said, I will always bring it uh, back around to being an artist because one, art comes in many forms. Yeah. Um, as an artist, what we imagine and what we create is two different things. Oh, add the third thing, what people see. Right Ooh. That's, a Ooh. Third, that's a whole different thing. But yeah, and continue. it's just great. Like the, everything in between, you can just think about it, yeah. life and death. There's so much more in between. Yeah. Because there are people that are out here living. And then there's people out here existing. They're still mm. alive. Mm. Mm. Bars. What? <laughs> what? Say it one more time. Say it one more time. <clears throat> <laughs> let me let me clear the phalange. Wait, phalanges are fingers. <laughs> let me let me clear the, the vocal vocal cords. There's people who believe that they are just dead, tired, exhausted, feeling like what is the point anymore? Yeah. So many meanings and there's mm. so much value in every single thing. And when you try to take value away from one thing to try and put it into the other, it doesn't work. It's it's polar opposites. Yeah. So it's just circumstances in life that people have to definitely start taking seriously. Yeah. Uh, to understand. And to your point, it's not just taking things seriously, but it's also being more open minded. Mm. And this doesn't just mean to new ideas. But be open minded about yourself as well. Right. right. You know, it's kinda a lot of people are frustrated, they're or they're walking around kind of depressed, not clinically, you know, that's a different situation, but people that are down in the dumps, feeling down on themselves. As we all do. Yeah. They're they're some sometimes it's because they're they're being so closed minded about their situation. You know, you could have lost a job. A lot of people lost their jobs during this pandemic. And some people took that and they're like, Wow, now I got so much time to work on this podcast. Or now I got so much time to work on my art. And then other people were like, ah, man, I lost my job. How am I going to pay the bills? I'm going to do this, that, and the third. It's not that you don't worry about those things, but you just being upset about that thing is not going to help you progress forward. At all. You know? Now it's like, oh, wow. Like I was finding a way to, I was trying to find a way to leave that job. Now I go, I can go get the job that I actually want. I can Mm -hmm. start looking for something new that I want to pursue. So being open minded isn't necessarily new ideas, but it's, ideas maybe that you didn't think about in a certain way you know what i'm saying oh, that, that was gas that was yeah. gas and, I, kinda, you know, I fumbled the bag a little bit at the end but yeah yeah but it's crazy because like being open-minded this is why i encourage everyone to learn mindfulness because uh now now sunny let me ask you this what do you think and there's no wrong answers so th- don't feel like you want jeopardy your time <laughs> right now <laughs> but what is-, what is the healthiest emotion and I think we talked about this before. I'm not sure. But what do you think is the healthiest emotion? I don't know if this counts, but I would say curiosity. Mm, okay. How come? Were you expecting me to say happiness? No. Oh, because okay. I've literally heard it all. I've heard sadness, yeah. anger, 
happiness, blah, blah, blah. Curiosity. I say curiosity because curiosity might have killed the cat. I was literally about to <laughs> say. <laughs> I was literally about to say, well, the cat died. So I don't know about that one. But um, guess what? The cat got eight more lives. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he got eight more lives to be curious. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, but seriously, uh, curiosity, I feel like will get you. Um, it would just get you places. Because as personally, I've always been obsessed with learning. Not just school, but learning learning life, learning new things, learning new ways to think about things. My favorite in the Bible, my favorite um, character was Solomon. Because, you know, God, I, I, I probably mentioned this before. Um, in, the, in the Bible, God was like, yo, what do you want? You know, like, I'll give you anything you want to reign over this kingdom. And <laughs> give know, me the smarts. Just, I just ask, ask for anything. He's like, yo. Give me that knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> give me that wisdom. Yeah, give me give me them smarticles. And um, and when I read that, I was like, why would you do that? You know that peaked, that piqued my curiosity as a kid immediately because I'm like, why why do you want to know so much? What's so cool about being smart? Facts. You know, and like no no king, no no like great human being ever was smart. When I was a kid, I didn't like everyone was. Great you yeah, you don't hear about warriors. people choosing yeah. to be knowledgeable yeah you know being knowledgeable didn't really seem all that useful as a kid and then i read about you know he got he became he created this great kingdom but the thing was that he what what it was was the wisdom the wisdom is what hooked me when i finally understood the difference between knowledge and wisdom mm -hmm. knowledge is the i would say knowledge is if we're gonna oh like a car right knowledge is a fuel and wisdom is a steering wheel so you can have a bunch of gas you can have a bunch of you can have a bunch of wit, you, you can have a bunch wear. of knowledge, but if you can't, you know, if you don't know where to direct that knowledge or how to direct that knowledge, it's not really going to be very useful. So when I say curiosity is the healthiest, is because when you want to learn something, then you know more, and now you can create, you can make more informed decisions, and usually a more informed decision is a better decision. Whether of you know, and this all depends on the person, their intentions, and whatnot. But for the most part, they're very intelligent people. They're not like most very intelligent people are not bad people because they know better. You know, just knowing more about life makes you a better person in general. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have intellectual people that are had terrible intentions, you know, during you know, World War Two and a lot of a lot of a lot of wars were started by intelligent people. Yeah. They they were smart in the brain. But when I'm talking, when you get to that next level where you're like, you know, war is dumb. You know, why are we, we're all living on this little planet in the middle of nowhere in space. What, why are we going to spend all this time fighting each other? Because yeah. they want peace. But they <laughs> fight. <laughs> but they want to fight. <laughs> because they want peace. Nah, yes. bro. What is, what would you say is the healthiest emotion? Like, what's your, um, what's your take on that? From talking to many people from um, trying to understand them and see the world through their eyes and walk a mile in their shoes. Definitely the healthiest emotion is gratitude. Mm, dang. It's taking- Dang, that's fire. It's taking what we have and turning it into enough. Because positive or negative, there's many people out there that are in negative situations. Mm. But if you're negative about that situation, what are you going to receive? More negativity. Yeah. Now, if you're positive about the situation, it's not going to help anything mm -hmm. if you're in a negative situation, but it balances. Yeah. Because it's taking what you have into and turning it into enough. Because so many people out there want to be angry at the world, but they don't have a reason. They think their reason is the why they're alive. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, oh my gosh, I'm just working. I'm just going to school. Yeah. There's people, so many people that get out of college and they don't use the degree. And then they're upset. They're like, why did I go to college? <laughs> why did I go to college? Yeah. Why did I waste all that time? Yeah. But when we take a moment to assess what we have, even if it's not everything we ever wanted, before I go on, it's crazy because I'm going to use myself as an, yeah, as an example. Of course. Well, who else could you use? When I was younger, I wanted everything that I have now. Mm hmm. But now that I'm in this position, yes. hey, blessed. All right. <laughs> Here, say that one more time. When I was younger, I wanted everything that I have now. Mm. But now that I'm in this spot, subconsciously and blindly, I want more. And I know that when I get to that moment where I have the more things that I wanted, 
I'm going to look back and be like, wow, why didn't I focus on the things that I wanted, that I had prayed for? Yeah. It was like, no, we miss, we miss um, the things that we have for everything that we ever wanted. Yes. And yeah. this is like. Wait, wait, say it again, because that's, that's powerful. Don't just slide past oh, that. Oh, my fault. Don't, my fault. don't just said, slide past that. I thought I could twist the slide, but <laughs> just right past it. We miss everything that we have for everything that we want, ever wanted. Mm. And it's like, stop and smell the roses. Yeah. Enjoy what Go you sniff have. Them joints. <laughs> yeah. But if you got allergies like myself, <laughs> don't stop yeah. this smell up because it ain't yeah. gonna be a good time. Benadryl. <laughs> but it's but it's gonna knock you, it's gonna knock you out though. It's gonna knock you out. Yeah. You ever bro, I used to this is gonna make me sound bad, but I used to take Benadryl before school so, so I could sleep in class. Well, Will, Will got great grades. He I was did. A, he was a great student. <laughs> very studious. Was, yeah, very studious. I was a studious student. <laughs> but um, yeah. once that food hits, oh, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Slumber. Remember the breakfast muffins? Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah, and they got rid of the chocolate chip. Oh, no. Remember when they did the whole grains? Bro, you don't get a, mu- you don't get a whole you grain don't get muffin. A whole if grain you want muffin. a muffin, you don't want chocolate, a- Chocolate, chocolate chip. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate chip. Chocolate chip chocolate muffin. Chips. Come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, did we meet through? I feel like we knew each other before improv. Though. We knew each other before improv, but, but that's our relationship we, didn't really, you know, blossom that's, like a flower. Don't yeah. go sniffing them. <laughs> it didn't really yeah, blossom. Didn't really. Today. Remember Lucky Coco? Yo, Lucky Coco. It's oh, still up on the board, God. bro. Still up on the board, bro. It was like the sh- burgundy, sha burgundy, sha burgundy. I yeah. thought it was the burgundy. It was sha burgundy. It was the the car scene thing. So um, Will and I were in improv together at Central York High School. Shout out, Mr. Hodge. Um, that really actually helped me connect with my, my actual self. Yeah. Right. Cause you, even in middle school, you kind of start creating this persona so that you could survive socially. Mm-hmm. And then you get to high school and it's just like times a thousand. Cause you, now you it's got, totally now, different. You got, now you got three grades ahead of you right. that you're trying to be cool with. And when you get to improv, none of that matters. Cause not only are all four grades in there, but the whole point of it is to be yourself. And that's why it's a huge shout out to uh, Mr. Hodge, Ben mm-hmm. Hodge. Um, if well, you see this, man, you are a blessing yeah. to the lives of the youth, man. Yeah, um, for sure. He taught us vulnerability. Mm-hmm. And I will forever use that. He taught us realness. Ooh. He taught us stillness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I, like literally, it, it, it was so amazing to just be in that class mm-hmm. because every day, People look forward to that class. Yes. Like after math and gym and all these other wah, earth wah. science. Wah, wah. Man, who, want, nobody, who, want, who wants to know that stuff, man? Who want to know about geology? Nobody <laughs> <laughs> want to learn about that. Yeah, shout out to my geologists out there. Yeah, facts. You guys are needed. But um, no, nah, that class was real. Yeah. That class was really real. Get real. Really real. Get real was get, lit. Get real. Yeah, yeah. Get real. Uh, also... um. Speaking of get real, since we're on the topic, <laughs> that's the that's the bullying thing. That's the, bro. That's the bullying thing. Full circle. And Full but circle. but the thing about um, I guess going back to the bullying before you continue on your improv story, um, things like get real are are good things because what is it's not telling you to stop bullying people. It's teaching you why you shouldn't treat people in a, in a certain way mm-hmm. you know there's a whole video of the the racial profiling with the in the convenience store and a lot of people were kind of confused at first but once you see the end of the video you're like oh dang like that's that was i was literally on the side of the the clerk you know like that was me or other people on the opposite side were like yo that's me in a store bro like that's that's literally how it is for me mm-hmm. and um it was just kind of this one day which i wish it was more consistent i don't know how it is now but it was just one day where you got to be real they do it on zoom um uh, yeah. <laughs> i'm pretty sure yeah but hey, we have it, to it was one day where you got to be real with strangers like some people you knew but a lot of times if you were a freshman oh or a gosh. leader and do yeah remember being a leader yeah like, yeah we made a family like yeah. with those kids yeah and it was so I met, I met one of my best friends that get real <sighs> yeah it's crazy like moments like that and experiences like that, you can never take for granted no. because it will always stick with you. Yes. And that's like the that's way different than just the war on bullying, because now you're you're just kind of punishing people for bullying. But you don't know why they're like they have a, a lot of times somebody that's bullying somebody else has a situation going on. 
And that's that's not what we're solving. We're solving. We're trying to help this kid who's getting bullied, which is you know by help, putting help the other out. person and like punishing the other. But person. now the other person is in an even worse situation than they probably were before. Before they mm-hmm. you know got got into bullying and like I, I say that like it's criminal activity. But <laughs> go to but jail. It's a, but we hey that gets reflected when we get older. That gets mm-hmm. uh, expanded into the real world, and now they might turn to some sort of criminal activity, and we put them in jail. Jail is not rehab. Joe nope. is not teaching you anything but how to be better at being not great. <laughs> and, <laughs> nah, they, and, they're literally yeah. putting you in a place um, where you you just don't have no room to grow. Yeah, like you they're just, trying to reform you in a way where you can act act n- better. Yeah, yeah, that's it exactly. So they're making you better at being a criminal, essentially. And um, you know, some people's lives do change out of jail, but that's not really the that's not their goal. Their goal is just to. But, and then you know there's put a the whole, pressure on them. There's a whole until they want to whole discussion we could have about that. But going back to the bullying, it doesn't fix it to just punish the, I guess the um the initiator of the bullying. And again, going back to improv, so you can continue your story. I think that it was kind of impossible in that situation to to bully someone or to mistreat each other. Like, sure, we're high schoolers. We're gonna be dra- We're gonna have drama. We have feelings and stuff, but there was no one that really like nobody really came at you you know mm-hmm. you didn't ever want to come at anybody because you got we got to know each other exactly we got to know each other's story we got to kind of unintentionally learn each other psychologically so we made sure that that just kind of as naturally empathetic people you know humans we were built for that we kind of like once you get to know someone it's hard to to be mean to them <laughs> to put it in simple words you finally understand what they see what they go through mm-hmm. what they think and like I don't know if this happened in your class, but um, definitely, I'm t- this is probably like acting one or two. But Hodge set two people in front of each other, and he just told us to sit there and feel. Mm-hmm. And it was able to like just was that theater arts? I I, I don't know. I think so. Um, but it was just us yeah, sitting there looking yeah. at each other, and it was so great because we got the chance to hold space for another person. Yeah, and you know, as high schoolers, we joked around and yeah, laughed yeah. and stuff, but. After a while, it started to it got, feel it real. good. And yeah. it was like, wow. And some people, they started crying out of nowhere. Then other person started crying. Yeah. It's like, hey, what? Yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> like, like whoa. Whoa. But yeah, man, like improv, like I definitely, I definitely miss that. Mm. And I thank God that we were able to meet through that. Yeah. Because, uh, but senior year, Sandy left me. Yeah, uh, I he, do. That's probably... There's a lot of things. I mean, I'm the person I am today because of the decisions I made. But I do think that if I were to use the word regret, two things that I regret are is not doing improv senior year. That would have, you know, that was one of my biggest mistakes, and not playing football senior year, and not because, not just because I love the sport and I love improv, but it's because those were I, those were communities that I built. Over three years. You oh know? my goodness! F- football. S- Sandy was an OG, just yeah. just like me. Yeah, we, we were, were the founders. Yeah, of founders. The- come on, man. Yeah, come on now. On on our block. Yeah. The, um, we kind of. How should I say? I just I made myself busier than I actually was. You know, I I was trying to get more serious about baseball so that I can go to college, and I was trying to just finish out the school year strong grade wise but i really did have the same amount of time it was just mentally i had blocked myself out i was being closed minded i had blocked myself out from the possibility of even doing those things because it's different if i would have tried like if i would have tried to play football and do improv and do all that at the same time and then i could be like nah i can't you know like right. i'm not i can't juggle it but i didn't even i was just like no i don't i don't got time you know and as a 17 year old kid at that time it's kind of you don't you don't realize the impact because for me I was just like ah for me imp- improv was about me you know that when I made that decision not when I was doing it but in that decision I was like ah I can't do this right, right. but then I didn't think about it. and the other thing was our team had kind of split up so I was that was the situ- yeah I the situation that. like a big reason was because it was like two of us left or three of us in it and then we were gonna probably get split up into these other teams but um. That decision was me being like, I, you know, I don't got time for this. You know, they got, they're chilling. They got a bunch of people. But then I didn't think about, you know, I'm leaving these people. They're not, I'm not going to be there and influence 
what I could have influenced. Or, because there was a lot of new people coming yeah, in as well. I couldn't and, have helped. Yeah. You know, I didn't give myself the opportunity to help or, you know, help Hodge bring these new kids in, help you guys lead these kids into doing what we do. And uh, and then with, with football, it was literally like those were my boys since some some of them since like fifth, sixth grade that, I, that I've been playing with. And it was, again, it was like, oh, I'm going to do baseball. You know, I got to focus on baseball. And it was it was that kind of decision that in the moment was real quick and easy because all you had to do was nothing. <laughs> it's really easy to do nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, afterwards, once I once I really got into college, I was like, wow. I for, for, As soon as I stepped into college, I was like, wow, I really could have <clears throat> I could have enjoyed that a little more. You know, I could have helped a lot more. I could have because, again, it was about me in the decision. But afterwards, I just thought about everyone that I let down. Right. And now, I guess that kind of helped help inspire me to create this podcast to get to get some of that back a little bit. But yeah, I love you. I love you more, <laughs> man. That was it was yeah. amazing. Thank you, thank you for sharing that like that side with me because like I never really knew like your take on like mm -hmm. why did you not do yeah. improv? Because yeah. first off, I just want to say that really hurt me because yeah, I yeah, looked yeah. at you, bro. I hurt Hodge too a lot. I could tell he was really like he let me do it, but. I really that that man did a lot for me, and I didn't I didn't pay the respects that he deserved. Damn man, yeah. it's there's a lot of people that was hurt because it's like you you were you were glue, bro. <laughs> you were glue, no yeah. gorilla. I, but yeah, man, that those memories they they definitely hold a nice warm spot in my heart, mm -hmm. and are the reason who I am who I am today. Yeah, and I'm grateful for that. That's why I am so blessed to have you in my life. Because you oh. are my brother. Oh. Like, we used to wake up at, like, 5 in the morning to go to the gym and shoot around and work out. 5 in the morning, balling up. Best on Central's basketball team. Come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah, we didn't even, we didn't even, we, we was the best ballers that wasn't even on the team. That didn't play. I wasn't good at basketball. But Will, 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 can, actually basketball. Play basketball. Will can actually play basketball. See me. Um... I was more of the uh, I was a gym class hero. I went hard in gym class. Oh, that's fact. Yeah, I if gym class was a professional sport, which I think it kind of is now, but um, because there's there's like those that's you, know, facts. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they they have like these weird professional sports that we mm -hmm. played in gym class. Yo, you know, tag is a professional. Yes, sport. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Something like that, dodgeball. You know, all these things that were kind of like like gym class kid games. I was so good at them, you know, like just random. That's fact. They, they, That's fact. It was like a weird skill set, you know. It, it just all it was was a lot of effort. It was like, yo, you see and, me in gym? Yeah, you see yeah, what I did? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always wish that the gym had a camera and then like so I could make my little highlight tape. <laughs> Bro, you submit but, it. ESPN. Yeah, put, and put I, me on there. You know, I can't use those skills anyway. <laughs> but um, like when I think about kind of our journey, just as our our friendship, I think it really helps come to this situation where we're now we're living in almost the same world we're doing different tasks in two different worlds for a similar reason so the way that we have come in, in our lives the, honestly if i'm gonna be honest with you the way i see it is that you are personality wise you are me with a lot less privilege which is another reason why i respect you so much because i like honestly i wasn't privileged in my own circle as far as the people that I knew and grew, and grew up with. But when I met you, I was like, wow, like, like I really could be doing more out here, you know, like Will, Will's in this situation and he's getting this, he's getting shit done. You know, he's, he's happy all the time. He was, he was in a better mood than me all the time. And, <laughs> and it was just kind of like, I felt attracted to that energy. You know, I was like, man, I, not only could I be doing more, but let me, let me see where this man's going. You know, let me see what this man is going to do, because there's no reason that he should be this energetic. There's no reason that he should be striving for so much. And then when I started to realize the similarities, I was, it just made me realize even more like, wow, I could be doing more as well. You yeah. know, I could be I could be taking advantage of the opportunities that I thought weren't either weren't for me or that I thought I didn't need to take advantage of. Right. So, yeah, man, like you're you're another reason that this podcast even exists. So I definitely had to have you on here. Hey, well, like I said, man, like it always comes back to me being grateful, man. Like I cannot express that enough because like you, you, I, bro, you're my brother. Like mm -hmm. we have gone through so much together. We have done so much together. Like literally 
when I see us, when I think of us, we are leaders. Think about how many times we went to the mi- bro, I love <laughs> think about how many times we went to the middle school and talked to those kids. Oh, man. Think about those trips that they invited us on yeah, to the, mentor the middle them. school boys. Yes, oh, and yeah. it's like, bro, how did our relationship get so good that we are able to experience things together? Yeah. The same kind of greatness. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, I was- two of them I knew that played football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you remember him? Yeah. yeah. Uh, they they were in the high school because I, when I was coaching, I didn't get to coach them in football because they were already older, but. Just seeing them grown up, even though I, you know, it was just that one instance and they still like talk to me. They're like, yo, Sandy, you know, like, and I was like, wow, Bro. we really, the, and then I think about when I was a kid, like I would meet a dude for five minutes and I would remember him for, I still remember some people that I met from Bro, that this, time. Oh you know? my, this is such a blessing uh, because literally today, literally today, uh, I woke up and I went out to eat at um, this breakfast spot. And this kid, he kept looking over at me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was with the Georgie, and he noticed he noticed that the kid was looking at me. Yeah. And he was like, well, that kid keeps looking at you. Yeah. The kid comes over. Um, the kid, he came over, and he was like, hey, man, I must have this wrong, but um, did you by chance speak in front of a group of kids um, at Central York High School? And I'm like, yeah. And he was like in Miss Turner's class. Shout out Miss Turner. Miss Turner was that? Shout out Miss Turner. And, she was um, a great teacher. He was like, "Is your name Will Johnson?" I'm like, "Yes." He was like, "Brother, I just want to say um, how thankful I am for mm-hmm. your words. You spoke to us years ago when I was like a little kid. Yeah. And him and his dad have a better relationship now." That's because crazy. of the words I spoke. That's crazy. And because they were arguing stuff. Yeah. And um, I'm not going to say his name because I'm not putting out his yeah. business. Uh, but shout out to you, man. You really touched my heart today. And I cannot. Oh, that was today? Me. Yes, bro. Wow. Literally today, this morning. I wow. I was like, <laughs> Georgie said, that's, just, that's the type of stuff you see in movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I was, I was literally so... I was speechless yeah. because I'm like, how are things like from years ago catching up to me now? Yeah. It's a blessed, the, the best compensation that you could really receive from putting things out there. The first year I coached football, there was this kid on the team that I, I got really close to. And, you know, he really, he really, he came to me all the time for, for help and for, you know, coach, how should I do this? How can I get better at this? And of course you build that relationship, but we only had it for a year. So you don't really get you don't want to get too crazy attached because they're going to be gone in a season. And next year he was an eighth grader. So he came back and he was like, coach, you know, what's what's good? What can I do this? When can I do that? Uh, how should I get better at this? And that that just kind of like it made me stop. I was like, wow, this kid is really being serious about, you know, having this relationship with me. Like he's really looking not only is he looking to get better, but he's looking to me. Like I have a responsibility to provide the right guidance. I can't just tell him how I feel. Right. I can't just tell him how I think he should do things. I gotta get him real, real stuff. I gotta. I started researching things. I started looking up, you know, the real way, real ex- workouts. Um, obviously, I gave him my own tips of what made me better. But I'm not, you know, I like I didn't. I'm not an NFL player. I didn't really go anywhere with football. But I was able to kind of give him real advice with that was backed up by people who were actually successful in what he's trying to do. And the thing is like you like you had an impact on him. Yeah. And he felt that. Yeah. And like it's it's a beautiful thing when you're able to have an impact on somebody and they can come to you because they trust you. Yeah. Trust is a heavy thing to That's people. Expensive. That's yeah, expensive. Definitely is. And another thing you don't get no refund on time. No. Nah. So you don't get a refund on trust either. At <laughs> all. At yeah. all, and sometimes it's hard to make that trust back up mm-hmm. if it if you go bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you if you spend that check, it's hard to make that money back. It's hard, yeah. And then sometimes you gotta wait for that stimmy to hit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you do get a stimmy. Yeah. Oh, sometimes. one thing I did want to hit on uh, since we we're kind of getting there, time wise, what was that? Um, you spoke at that that rally. You did a spoken word at the Black Lives Matter rally here in New York. Uh, well, I'm in New York, by the way, right now. <laughs> if you got confused, back. you got confused about that. But uh, yeah. So what what was that situation like? You know, what was the obviously the the everything that was going on is what inspired you to do that. But what led up to you being up there in front of all those people? So um, 
as like I said, as an artist, like you just get blessed with these wonderful opportunities. Um, so I went to that protest and every speaker that was going, first off, shout out to the two girls, um, Arlette and Zipporah. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you yeah. guys are amazing. Yeah. Literally these young, wonderful queens are literally the future. Amazing what they did. But um, they set it up and while I was there, every speaker that was going up, I was just getting more and more in tune and just moved and my emotions were just high and running crazy. And then I asked him, I was like, please let me go up and speak to my people. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was powerful because throughout the entire event, like so many people were touching hearts, but when I went up there, it was different. Like the whole vibe switch. Everyone was quiet, bro. Yeah. Everyone was, I, I didn't get a chance to be at the rally, but everyone was dead silent. Wow. And like, they were encouraging me. And when I got to the end, um, I did this thing. I just got down on my knee and put my fist up. Yeah. Everyone got down on their knee. Yeah. And then I stood up and I said, and just like that, my people will rise. And everyone yeah. stood up. It was, that, it was, yeah. a, right. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was beautiful. It was, uh, a that was moment glorious. that. We choreographed that, but yeah, man, that's that's crazy. Cause I, you know, I was I was all the way in Jersey. I didn't even know York. I the your video is what made me realize that York was having rallies. Cause you know, you know how York is, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I I saw that I saw all those heads. And I it was over me. like I want to say twelve hundred people there, bro. I, but what? It was literally like if, a, if you were from bro. York, that is a a spectacular number. Yeah, if you if you know the situation, but um. Yeah, especially saw, in New York. <laughs> especially I saw in New York. The situation when I saw your video and I saw you speaking up there, I was like, at first, because at first I just saw you at the podium. I was like, oh, you know, Will's doing a spoken word at an event. And then I saw the amount of people outside. I was like, yo, this is definitely a rally because it was during all the, the Black Lives Matter stuff. And I was like, this is definitely a rally. And, I'm, and then mm-hmm. I saw the location. I'm like, this man is in York. This is happening in York. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't, Mind I, blown. I had no and idea. Just to let you guys know, like, literally, I live in Florida. I flew back just to speak. To yeah. <laughs> have that moment. Yeah. Because it was like, this is a place where I grew up. And that's why I'm so thankful for you, Sandy, because you constantly bring back why York is a place where I should feel good. Yeah. I appreciate that. It's like, I, I do not like York at all. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just start. I do not like York at all because it, it has that'll, no energy. That'll resonate with a lot of people. <laughs> but um, there are moments and there are experiences that will never be recreated yeah. anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And I'm thankful for that. Yeah. Because th- those moments, man, like York, York was a real one that yeah, day. York, yeah. And you, the thing, the, again, I love York, but me and Will have very similar, I mean, very distinct, distinctly different situations growing up. So he has a little bit more of a an experience with, he has more reason to feel the way he does. For me, I just moved out my parents out of the house that I grew up in. Um, I've been gone for a while, but you know, the house, they were there. So the house was always there and unpacking everything, seeing it empty, being actually like leaving the house and being gone, gone. It was, it was a surreal moment because you're sad, you know, you're it's a little bittersweet, but when you actually close the door and we were driving away for one last time, I was, that was my childhood. You know, that's where I made all the memories. That's where all the all the good things happen. That's where all the bad things happen. When I was somewhere else, that's where I came back to. When I wanted to go somewhere, that's where I left from. You know, it was mm. it was that it was that it was kind of the, the it was the headquarters of my childhood. It was the headquarters of my life for 15, 16 years. Mm-hmm. And it was part of the reason why York is so special to me, because York is York is home. No matter where I go, I could I could live in Brazil for the rest of my life. I could go to I could live in Cambodia for twenty years. But at the end of the day, it's not York. You know, this isn't where this isn't where I learned school. This isn't where I made my first friends. Not when I mean I was I I got here when I was six. I had a couple buddies in Maryland, (laughs) but um, this is where I made real connections, real friends. This is where I I got into myself. This is where I became myself. You really planted your seed here. Yeah, right? you know, this is the the area that made me part of who I am. And then I think about the little things. You know, I think about Rudders 
I think about the the snow barn. I think about the skating rink. You know, oh, there's man. there's just so many memories, and I think that's what it is. You know, it's the memories that really make York what it is to me. But at the same time, it's also the environment that helped create who I am. I think um, we're getting on that time, but um, come on now, y'all thought I wasn't gonna. Oh uh, y'all, y'all see it? Come on, man! You didn't think? You Peep. didn't think? Peep. man! You didn't? Y'all see it? This is. Hey, hey, this right here. Sabe. <laughs> hey, okay, yeah, you heard that? The spicy boy. Yeah, you know they used to call me spicy black guy in high school. Why? Because everyone thought I was black until I spoke Spanish. So oh, like, right. oh, you're like a spicy black guy. Adobo. Which is now that I look back at it, it's probably a little racist. But uh, <laughs> a little bit racist. <laughs> but yeah. Um. So this book, I'm gonna let Will explain the the details. But this Lock book in. right here is called Finding Me by Will J. It's got, I don't know if y'all can see it. Hold on, let me put it down a little quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finding Me and the cover art here. He can explain the inspiration behind everything, but I just want y'all to know that this book is real. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. This book is a collection of real human thought, real human emotions, and it's on paper. It's available on Amazon. This book is very accessible to you. It'll get to you in, is it on Amazon Prime? It's on Amazon. Yeah, it'll, yeah, get, on to Amazon you, it'll get to you in two days, bro. Two days. Two days. Or sis, if you're If lady. you're a, a woman. If you are a, a strong, independent woman, yeah. definitely check this book out. Let Will know what's what's good with it. Let me know what's good with it. Please, please. And, the uh, Will, Will is tell people about your always book. great. You should you should be telling people. You should be the one telling people about your book. So yes, the book is called Finding Me. Um, the book is not necessarily about me, but yes, I am the author. I am the artist. The pain, the raw emotion behind it. Um, so the cover art is actually a heart with a puzzle piece missing because it's always a battle trying to understand what you feel, and sometimes it feels like things are missing hence the puzzle piece uh and sometimes you know when you're doing like a thousand puzzle piece it's hard to find the right pieces that go together and when you try to stick pieces that don't go together but it look like it does it doesn't work out uh but i'll read uh the back of the book for you hopefully you can find truth between these lines hopefully you can find the answer to the question you had to keep asking somewhere between these lines you will find yourself don't mistake everything you've wanted for the things you've never got. Mm. Finding yourself will not be easy and it will not be hard. I believe you found this book for a reason. I believe you found me for a reason. Thank you. So, yes, um, if you would love to support me and to get this book, the book is on Amazon. You can either reach out to me or Sandy. The link is in my bio. Um, let, let, me, let me plug that real quick. So, my Instagram is at king of clowns at king of clowns so if you'd like to follow me i appreciate it um but yes uh thank you so much king of clowns is spelled k-i-n-g-o-f-c-l-o-w-n-s another one i spelled that right i think i spelled that right you did all right yeah. Why, why are you questioning how you spell it? I don't know. I just, yeah, the way I broke it up kind of confused me. But it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have but, to chop um, it up. Thank you for hopping on to another episode of The Sandbar with my boy, Will Johnson. Look out for more content. Look out for his book. Look out for his spoken word, for yes. his, his, the products that he creates for you people. All right. Check him out. Check his Instagram out. Check the YouTube out. And, um, you know, if you found something in this session interesting, confusing, riveting, or you feel strongly about something that we said, maybe you disagreed with something that we said, or maybe you strongly agree with something that we said, you know, leave a comment, let us know, hit me up, hit Will up, and uh, we'll be sure to uh, address your participation accordingly. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs>